Welcome to part two of the return to the shiny happy people cult compound. Last week I told y'all about how I returned to Indianapolis to the compound uh, where I was sent to, I guess behavioral rehab is the easiest way to say it. And I mentioned during that live stream that I thought it would be really cool to talk to my friend Lindsay Williams about her experience returning to the compound. And guess what? I have her here this evening, Lindsay Williams, what is up? How are you? Hello. I'm amazing. Hey. I'm so good. I'm really excited about this. When I heard that you were going back to India, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, you know what? It was so interesting for me, Lindsay. And I'll, I'll, I'll replay a couple of the videos that um, that I showed last week just so you, know, you can kind of see them as well. Um, cool. And then we've got some pictures of your well your compound or the, the the compound that you were at for the longest right uh, <laughs> yeah. so we'll be showing those as well um but it was so strange it was it didn't really i don't know trigger any trauma for me it it felt very surreal and i kept saying to myself it just feels like i'm in a dream mm. that's that's what it was like for me um but i don't think you you had the same experience so i definitely want to talk about that yeah. um because you uh, you kind of made an impromptu trip out to Indianapolis. And um, I think we've talked about it a little bit on a previous live stream. Um, but yeah, I'm just so interested to hear kind of what that was like for you as an experience returning to the scene of the crime, as it were. <laughs> totally. Um, but yeah, uh, but we are live right now, folks. So feel free to, to send your questions, your comments. Uh, I actually got some really cool intel uh, on the last live stream, uh, mm -hmm. someone commented and clarified a couple of the, uh, of the things about the Indianapolis Training Center that I was kind of confused on. Um, one of the things was um, I remembered a big conference room, and I thought that conference room was on the second floor, and I couldn't find it. And someone commented on YouTube to clarify what happened to that conference room. So uh, we'll talk about that as well. Lindsay, did you spend any time at the Indianapolis Training Center? I sure did. That's yeah, right. did. I went to I went to the Indianapolis Training Center on my way from Atlanta when Bill first sniffed me out and mm. had me go to Indy with three other girls. So it was sort of this weird litmus test of like, you have to go there. And once you have your two weeks of counseling seminar, right. then I can have you come to headquarters because I hadn't finished the faith virtue knowledge journals. I mm, had not taken course. a counseling seminar. I had been to Excel. Like I think what people don't always understand about all of the, the culture back then is that in order to work at some of these facilities, even whether your parents were paying for it or not, you still had to kind of there, there were, there were, um, lists of things that you had to accomplish in order to even right. be allowed to go to them. Yes. Um, and unless you were a problem child and then you were, you could be sent there, but then your parents yeah. were still probably paying Hi, for it's you me, to the work there. Child. <laughs> <laughs> I became one too. So we're in good company, but, um, I, Bill really wanted me to be at headquarters, but I really didn't have a lot of, um, I didn't have those gold stars by my name of like, check this, check this, check uh, this. It was like, oh, I did Excel. I've worked a couple of children's institutes and I just have a lot of passion to do something in your ministry. So he wanted service, me to go. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So he wanted me to go to Indy. So I spent the two weeks there, did the counseling seminar. It felt, it, it was weird because I didn't really see Indianapolis quite at that point as the training center that it is for students working and living there uh -huh. because I was attending a seminar and then I moved on. Right. However, when you walk in the doors of the Indianapolis training center, it is so different from every training center and every IBLP institution I have ever been inside of mm -hmm. it. The oppression is palpable when you walk mm. through the door, like Oklahoma had it too, but it, it was not to the, the, the weight that you mm. feel when you're in, in Indy, all eyes. I, I, it just, everybody is tattling on everybody and you feel mm. it like the, the eyes are everywhere. So you were just on your best, best, best behavior. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's like you said, that was kind of the, the compound for bad kids. Yeah, right? it really um, was. The life focus program was there. They had a similar program for for girls. I, I don't remember what the name of that program was. Uh, quite I honestly, no. Yeah, um, it's past my time. 
I don't think you, I think equip was the alert for girls, right? No, equip, equip was where it was male and female. Oh, and equip, equip, yeah. Equip is where okay. you, it was, it was mixed company, but you were learning to, um, to counsel on a much deeper level. And a lot of those people went into the LAT program. So they, that, yes. those were the ones that were then over the students that were overseeing actual LITs. It began okay. with the, the leader in training program is what LIT stands for. And that was meant for the juvenile delinquents that the city of Indianapolis decided yes. to gift to IBLP because yes. somebody very eloquently sold them a bill of goods saying, we can reform your children we can that help. are delinquents. We can help your Russian orphans and all of your juvenile delinquents. That's <laughs> what we're Indy, good at. And Indy reason. said, we didn't know we needed it. We had an orphan <laughs> problem from Russia, but thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Yeah, <laughs> but th that is what they called us in the... I. That's another one. I was always a little fuzzy on that, but you're right. They called us leaders in training yeah. in the life focus program, uh, which basically just meant you are constantly under thumb. You're a problem. You will always be watched. Yeah. And you have issues that need to be resolved with intense brainwashing and borderline torture. Yeah. Um, you know, I, the other thing about the Indianapolis training center and Lindsay, you might be able to shed some light on this. Was the Indianapolis training center, the only training center that had the prayer rooms or, or do you know if those as far as I know, and honestly, my knowledge of all of these things really stops at 1999. So mm. I feel like a fucking relic. But I it for what I understand, there weren't prayer rooms at other training centers. OK, um, I didn't know prayer rooms existed at Indy. I had heard like whispers of people being like quarantined to their room for several days because they had uh, misstepped and they needed to come back to God and maybe like meditate on some things. I was not aware of the extent of it until I mm -hmm. left everything in like 2000. And yeah. that's when I started realizing like, whoa, there was a lot more insidious stuff going on, but it didn't surprise me because that place no. feels so oppressive. And, and mm -hmm. our instincts, if you were a little tuned into your instincts and hadn't fully turned them off, you felt it. I'm very sensitive to that kind of. There's a smell stuff. of fear. You can, like that's yeah. that and we were all in constant fear that we yeah. were going to get caught or get in trouble and uh, i mean you know the the life focus guys we were i i, I mean to be fair we were kind of hooligans um there's there's <laughs> yeah. no doubt there Bravo was rouser. <laughs> there was a an incident that i remembered like when i was standing outside of the kitchen at the indianapolis training center in this hallway uh that is between the dining room and the kitchen Yep. Uh, I remembered this incident where me and one of the other guys in life in the life focus program had a disagreement. So I waited for him in that hallway. And as soon as he came out of the kitchen, I just jumped him and started uh, fighting with him. Uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to use, what? but what, like, words. were you just over it? it what, like, or he really had just been so egregious against you. Like, no, he just, uh, he just annoyed me. Uh, I mean, we, we, we did all kinds of crazy okay. in there. We, Fair. we, uh, we pulled a guy out of his bunk bed one night and shoved his head in the toilet and kept flushing the toilet Daddy. Um, because listen, <laughs> he had been snitching and you know what? We just, Snitch we adopted prison snitches. rules. That's exactly right. Yeah. We had to take care of him. You can't be oh snitching out. Here. Yeah. That was Is that honestly what put you in the dangerous. prayer room? <laughs> no, that's the thing. Oh, that's okay. not what got me in the, what got me in the prayer room. And I talked about this in the last live stream was fraternization. That's oh, what got me. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. yeah, when you start going down the physically sinful path, that's what they care about most. <laughs> Violence, but whatever. They had no proof whatsoever, just suspicions. Uh, that that's was all it. they need. That's all just they need. whispers and murmurs. Well, and honestly, if you think about it, that's kind of gossiping. Of course it is. And that's a sin, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but it's rewarded. Yeah. It's rewarded by the higher ups. As, as long as you are AI. gossiping about the right stuff and to the right people, it's totally fine. It's tattletailing. Yeah. Yeah. They were snitching. That's that's yeah. just what it was. <laughs> um, I wanted to play a couple of the videos for you, Lindsay, and, and see if you yeah, recognized I'm or remembered anything. So let me play uh, this first video is, I believe, uh, from the lobby. So like when you walk in the front door and you remember the Indianapolis Training Center, the thing that 
I, you know, just I knew where I was as soon as the Uber pulled up was that weird carport that they had. <laughs> because it's so oddly extensive. Yes. Is it not? It yes. is the widest carport on the planet. It's huge. But it's it like... makes sense because that used to be a hotel. And so that's where the people would pull up and unload their luggage and all that stuff. So, I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, when you're just pulling up to what you think is a training center, it's like, why is this carport so <laughs> But it's like huge? Vegas style big. Yes. It's, it's not it's Indianapolis, you know, it, it, yeah. it's, it's ill proportioned to the building itself. It really is. Yeah. Uh, so this is, this is, uh, the lobby as it looks today at the Indianapolis training center. Let me just go ahead and play this for Pretty you. Much okay. completely reoriented the front lobby from what I was I mind blown by this. Right. Um, I mean, I feels way like I can breathe right I think, looking at this. I think, <laughs> right. Um, it's so they were open offices. and welcoming. But the wood paneling is still up open. on the sides. <laughs> <laughs> that wood I dusted, paneling I dusted that is shit. classic, right? Oh, it ain't coming down. No. There's no, no and, way. I mean, it actually, I mean, it is very nice looking. It looks very elegant. I will Probably say that. real wood. <laughs> I'm sure it is. But the interesting thing, and, and I don't know if your memory is better than mine, probably because, you, you know, substance abuse after trauma. literally like yeah. as soon as I got out of the training center and trauma. Yeah, probably a little trauma. bit of trauma brain. <laughs> I just I I thought there were offices on that first floor. Someone did confirm. So I was questioning whether Bill Gothard's office that he had was on that first floor. It was. And someone did confirm it. You know what it is now? It it's was. like a a weird teacher's lounge or like a little <laughs> an administrative office with like multiple cubicles and it's in it, when but you that come is where in the was. double doors and yep. you go to the right and it's in the right corner exactly yep. and i had and this I sat there many many hours vague memory of it and i i just i couldn't be certain and someone someone commented um on on the first episode and said yep that's that's where he had his office <laughs> so you actually met with him in that office are as you well, kidding Lindsay? me yes constantly because usually uh, when i was at indy i was there with him i was like the headquarters delegation remember like he would ask me to come good. to indy with him so yeah. i would take the horrible footsieing ride for three hours to indianapolis and then you know get off you know the the van <laughs> and then go and get a room and then come back down and just, you know, wait to be of service. And sometimes mm -hmm. I would sit in his office if he just like, I don't know, needed a, a build a buddy sitting over in the corner. <laughs> um, or I would, or I would go over and I would sit, um, if you were looking over at that area where his office is, yeah. there's like a fire door as well. Um, yes. I, I, I fired. Why is my memory so sharp like this? All the way at the end, nuts. right? Yeah. It's on at the uh -huh. end. But then across, like next to that, the wood paneling would start again and they had those white, you know, wingback chairs. And I would mm -hmm. sit in one of those white wingback chairs for, for hours just waiting um, because yeah. I, the staff in Indy were not really excited about me being there. And it's not because they knew anything about me or, oh, she must be foot seeing her. Like it was just, I was, I had no purpose in being there. Hmm. I wasn't. Well, I and wasn't... You, you potentially were an eye trap for a lot of the young men there at that point in your life, right? Wearing those clothes, I don't see how that was possible. But sure. hey, listen, yeah, listen, I don't. No, we, <laughs> I don't know how navy and white and very we saw, weird like, hair in the eighties. <laughs> even a little bit of collarbone, some ankle. Oh, honey, like my that's... clavicles were. Are you kidding me? My clavicles You're... got me in trouble so many times. I was wearing higher up necklines. I'm dead wow. serious. I was told that my clavicles were a stumbling block when I was at headquarters. Your clavicles were a I have great clavicles. They were an eye trap. Way. I'm just saying. See Look them? at those things. Look at those things. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, popping bones I'm, there. Woo. I'm just, woo. I'm going to have to take a little bit of a break. <laughs> I, I need some cold water because the clavicles just, I it's mean, it's just bringing ridiculous. it all back. But it's they, it they, all they back had me work me. in the, they had me work in the, um, in the kitchen like once and i think oh, it lasted maybe a day yeah and it lasted mm -hmm. like not even a day and i was literally like invited to leave the kitchen <laughs> and that's when i started dusting wood paneling in the lobby i'm dead <laughs> serious dead invited serious. to leave the kitchen I was to uh leave. jonas k called you a clavicle goddess thank you jonas k <laughs> oh i did I did want to, <laughs> I wanted to show this comment from Nuria as well, because it said Lindsay needed more grooming. I thought oh. she was talking about like, you needed to brush your hair more. I was like, that is really rude, Nuria. But she was actually <laughs> talking about like, 
<laughs> the additional grooming that you received at Indianapolis before you graduated to headquarters. So yeah. To, okay. I was like that. that, that could go in many directions needing more <laughs> grooming. I mean, like I know I'm a bit of ragamuffin right now. And also Bill you, tried to groom, but you know. listen, no one's, no one's paying attention to your hair right now. They're just staring at those clavicles. The clavicles I mean, they're yeah. kind of blocked by cult chronicles though. It should be cult clavicles. Why Cl are they not cult, cult clavicles. clavicles. Wow. <laughs> that's that's your be backup. the cult that I lead. That's your backup account. That's oh, what that hell is. Yeah, go TikTok. Woo. Um, here's another one that I wanted to show you uh of just like kind of walking through the area uh in the hallways on the first floor. This right now they've just got this like, one's kind of interesting. I was still very lost and disoriented rooms. at this point. Well, and um, when it starts getting redesigned like this or you know, just like redecorated, it is weird. Conference yeah. rooms. That I, I was like able this. to confirm was the dining hall. They probably have but it, like but this is I think where I remember the big dining hall being. Yep. So yeah. they must have just like partitioned it off. So let, let me, me, there we go. So when I would go down with, God, that's, I need to find a different way to say that. <laughs> when I would travel to Indy with Bill. Um, <laughs> you said sorry. I, I got I, off nope, and then just I'd, stopped the sentence earlier. And I was like, I, don't say anything. We, just nope, leave it alone. Nope, just, just, I walk <laughs> into a lot of those things. Um, uh, blame it on the cult. But when I would travel to Indy with Bill, a lot of the times it would be for conventions or big seminars, um, like a, a women's seminar or like a women's counseling seminar or a men's counseling seminar. Mm. And so um, I would, I feel like that room that you were showing, there's a big partition like hotels yes. have going through the center. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember it being that small. So I think that partition was always open whenever was. I was there because I remember that thing being just like ginormous. Huge, huge, yeah. huge, huge, huge. huge. And huge. it was. Now, yeah. I did get some comments on the first episode as well saying those partitions have always been there and they would sometimes yeah. put them up. I, I don't know if that was maybe after our time there um, you know, because I, I was think there that they also did it for, for seminar sessions, you know, like they would, they would Breakouts, pull them yeah. through to have like, yeah, breakout sessions and things like that. But mm -hmm. if you had a really big seminar going on, those things were pushed back. Like I went down, yeah. I think, I think I was there for, sorry, I keep saying down because headquarters, like Chicago and Indiana, you were, you were traveling but, um, downward. Yes. I would try, I would travel there when we would go to Indy. I, um, it was, I went three different times, I think, for the Christmas party. Like oh, they're okay. like headquarters would always sorry, that took me a long time to get there. Um, they would have a Christmas party there. And so we would come to Indy and do the <laughs> Christmas party. And with that, it was because huge. it's such a festive place. Oh, well, uh, honestly, it was probably one of the best times in my entire year because really? Bill was too distracted with everybody being there and mm -hmm. all of his favorite humans. And so I just kind of could like slink over and be out of his eyesight. And then he could just like mm -hmm. go follow other people. But then upstairs on the top floor, which was amazing that you showed the top floor, they would deck got a video that, of that too. It out. They would yep. deck it out with Christmas trees and holiday decorations and everything. Wow. Like it was literally an actual like fun Christmas moment. Oh, um, how cool. it's hard to believe but it was actually probably one of the only super positive i'm surprised awesome they even they did. you know observed christmas just because it distracted from jesus yeah but bill gets christmas presents it's even in the documentary uh, where okay. someone pops out of a box and hands him a suit yeah oh so, that's right that, yeah uh-huh um, yep mm -hmm. um speaking of the top floor let me play that one really quick because honestly Lindsay, this it's was huge between it was the stair the stairwell that you know, brought back a lot of memories <laughs> yep. and then being on that top floor. And, and I really, I didn't spend a lot of time on the top floor. It, to me, it was just the, the only place in the building that still looked almost exactly identical. Yeah. I think that's um, what blew me away too. I was like, Whoa, nothing yeah. has really changed up there. There's the view of downtown Indianapolis. And I think that's why floor. it made an impression on us too, because you mm -hmm. had such a beautiful view of the city. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just incredible. The like wood, they still have the all wood. those, the drop those ceilings. Wood panelings. Yeah. Yeah. Those carvings. I can't. I can't. What, and <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Lindsay, wasn't there like a, a separate room in the middle of all that? Like it was like a, some it sort was of even either in the middle room. or towards the end. It was either there's in the another, middle or like, towards the end. There's because another they had, at the end. Yeah. Yes. Because they, they at one point had gutted it to make it the, um, the cosmetology school. Yes. 
Um, yeah, and someone mentioned that in the comments as well. That lasted like 18 seconds because cosmetology school would actually force you to have to learn some things that was mm. anti Bill Gothard. Right. Um, you know, he just wanted to be able to have women have curly hair and get haircuts yep. and, you know, be all safe and pure. But that um, was that was all the cosmetology school yeah. was, was just curling yeah. and and uh, man cuts. <laughs> just barely applying any makeup. Just a bit of I doubt makeup was even a part of it. Just look boring and droll, but make your hair hot. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was probably perming. I'm sure there was haircuts. There was probably no dyeing or coloring going on at all whatsoever. Even though Um, this is me guessing, but I also went through actual cosmetology school, you know, so I can that's true. I can truly imagine the oh my gosh. Plus, you cannot teach cosmetology school with shears and chemicals and not be a licensed school so i think they probably all also uh came to some like roadblocks as far as like the indianapolis sure. or the state boards and stuff because if you're going to have a school for cosmetology then they need to be able to pass state boards well yeah because i mean didn't they run into the, some of the same issues initially with the colleges and, and all of that because it's like <laughs> no this yeah. degree is meaningless it's not accredited it has to be certified and you cannot yeah, practice law exactly graduating from the oak brook college of law sorry and so they um, went to California and they actually made themselves a legitimate law firm or mm-hmm. law school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's what they ultimately did. Um, okay. You know, I, what was what was interesting about some of the comments is most of the comments were confirming the stuff that that I already thought was true and just couldn't quite mm-hmm. remember or, you know, the changes that they've made in, you know, the remodel uh, to make <clears> it <throat> a, a culinary community college is what it is now. Pretty cool. Not bad. That's kind of um, awesome. It is kind of it is kind of cool. Um, yeah. But uh, so one of the things that I was looking for that it really bothered me at the time is there okay. was a a large dedicated conference room uh, or seminar room, if you will. So yeah. not the not the one on the first floor that was the dining room, but right. there was another conference room that I specifically remembered, yep. um, and I remember it well. Because during one of the conferences, they were basically asking people to, you know, come up and and dedicate their lives to the Lord. And I remember some of the guys in my life focus jumping up to go volunteer. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? (laughs) They've been abusing us. It was like the ceremonial hall, too. Like they would do all the ceremony stuff and they would have the really big conference, you know, uh, seminars in there. That's where we had all of the like the holiday stuff too. And the, the mm-hmm. counseling seminar was held in there. Um, breakout sessions would go else, elsewhere throughout the, uh, the compound. But um, yeah. And the ceiling was super high in there too. Yes. Really big yes. arched windows, mm-hmm. you know, throughout the whole thing. And I think you, I don't know if you remember, but that actually, when it was just a hotel, that's where the pool was. So really? yeah, it used to be a pool and they filled it with cement and made it a conference room. So can you imagine how gorgeous that must have been? As oh a my pool? gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been pool. beautiful. Yeah. But, exactly. um, apparently, but did you have to go up to the second floor in order to enter that? Or that's yes, what I thought. Yeah. That's, and that's what I had a memory of. And mm. so I went to the second floor looking for this larger conference room and it was, it just wasn't there. And then someone mm. in the YouTube comments, I think it was just yesterday clarified that they actually, um, they remodeled the second floor. Oh. Um, and turned it into a bunch of classrooms and and breakout rooms and that sort of thing. So that. But what did they do with that? Because no longer it's, there. But it's cavernous. It's multiple stories high. I I I don't know. It had but to have they, been at least gone. two, if not three stories high. It was really tall, right? I have videos. I have uh, yeah, I have videos of it. Huh. It was um, high. I they they remodeled it somehow, and it is no longer the big conference room that we remember. Well. Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the reason I was looking for it is because outside of that, like there was like a little lobby type area outside the conference room when you walked right. out. You remember that? And there yep. was a closet off to, you know, as you're looking at the doors to the conference room, there was a closet to the left side. Yep. And that is one of the, co- one of the, the closets <laughs> where I was doing some hanky panky. <laughs> That's right. I know that all about right. closets and attics, honey. Oh yeah, <laughs> hilarious! How much time we spent in closets while in yeah, yeah. the shiny happy people while club. closeted. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, find. Well, I told you right that um, the guy that started the Life Focus program led the Life Focus program while I was there. 
Brandon McDonald um, mm-hmm. later came out of the closet. Literally. Wow. Um, I think it was just maybe a few years Good for ago. Him. How I, awesome. I mean, fantastic yeah. for him, very happy for him. But right. at the same time, bro, just because you were angry about not being able to live your truth didn't mean that you had to torture the rest of us. Push it on us all. My God. That guy was, I mean, he was. That's the conflict really of difficult. conditioning, though. You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine, too, for him, like the conflict he was probably carrying because he probably was so messed up in his in him yeah. own, his own self you know oh dude he was battling just, himself every yeah. step of the way every we single day just oh, battling it. his his inner truth yeah. right? it's just it, it, and denying wow, yourself yeah. and i can't Absolute, imagine the frustration yeah. that perkle i mean we can't imagine it because we've also had our own you know we've all been there and stuff but yeah like having to deny yourself all of that and just the frustration that that's going to percolate and you're like you know what i'll just bully other people <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> what else, literally what else just can i do it out <laughs> On a right. bunch of sixteen year olds, that, yeah, with some pious that attitude. Do anything about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no. Okay, now I want to talk about headquarters. Okay, you but went first, back to headquarters. All right, for first oh, though, please. go back to Indy because, like, dude, Indy, <laughs> do you remember as well? Okay, because I I was trying to follow with the videos, but when you first walk in and you go to the right, it's Bills. Mm-hmm. The front desk was obviously in in the middle there, but mm-hmm. when you go to the left, mm-hmm. there used to be gift shops all the way down the left side. Oh my God, you're and right. So they looked like offices, but they had the yes. same like inset, like arched windows with, you know, the hot cross hatches and da da da. So it was like a bookstore, music store, gift shop, deedle dab, you know, all of their materials and everything. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it went like two or three like office rooms all the way down. Yeah. Um, And then I remember too, like when you got to the end of that hallway, there was this huge, like, do not push on this exit because all the, all the bells and whistles and alarms would go off because they had so many LITs front, like juvenile, I'm going to call them juvenile delinquents because those are the ones that were from the city. Yeah. Um, They would try to escape. Yeah. And they would go, (laughs) they would go out that door. Mm -hmm. So I remember seeing that. I was like, I'm not going anywhere near that door. If I even, if it even feels my energy, I did not even remember the gift shops. Yeah. But you're a hundred percent right. And that's, uh, one of those rooms or offices along that hallway where those gift shops were mm-hmm. is where I got interrogated multiple times about letters wow. that were being sent to me in the gift shop or they transformed them into other, other things I, after I, I just gone. remember, I remember Brandon McDonald sitting in a chair going through my mail, um, and my, you know, group leader bringing me in there. Okay. Uh, to be interrogated about letters that were being sent to me. Because you were there when? I'm sorry, when, what? Years? 1999. Oh, I would I would have just been mm-hmm. there. I mean, there might have been. It's a pretty long hallway, right? So there might have been yeah. a few other offices there that I don't yeah, remember. Possible. I don't know. But I was like, oh, that was all gift thing. shop stuff. Yeah. Huh. I'd completely then, forgotten about the gift shop. That's you so remember wild. the entry. The entry was all red carpet throughout the entire yes. training center, mm-hmm. except for the conference room, the really big one that used to be the pool on the second floor. That was baby blue. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. It and I was always baby found blue. that to be really unnerving to me because I don't know. I realize now, like I'm very hypersensitive. I really like, I, I, I don't know. I just feel things, I guess. I don't know. Mm. I want to see wooby wooby, but I always thought it really fascinating that like you walk in and it's just this like powerful, robust red carpet energy. And then when they want you to learn and be at, with your with your defenses down, you would mm. be in a room with this calm, calming blue carpet. And the um, huge and vaulted ju- ceiling. Yeah. Exactly. And just this mm-hmm. expanse and sunlight coming in and just like, oh, my God, the Lord is speaking to me. Like there, it was just yeah. I, I found it to be very kind of mind controlly, mind fuckery, if you will. Mm. Um, always, always felt that because it was the same actually at the Oklahoma city training center too. They had red carpet throughout that freaking training center until you walked into the main, you know, big meeting room, big, you know, and then it was baby room. blue. Yeah. And it was blue. Ask, That's ask, so well. ask Bryce. That's crazy. You, you know, what's interesting yeah. is like I start while I was walking through <laughs> what is now the, the culinary community college and all the carpets <laughs> green now. And it's started, gorgeous. So it, calm. It, it, very nice. <laughs> um, but I started questioning myself. Like, wait, was the mm. carpet actually red? Is, or am I just mis- misremembering that? And no, it was baby. green the whole time. No, it wasn't. You'll red. never forget that. It was no, red. no, yeah, no. It uh-huh. was hateful, angry, <laughs> vicious, horn. 
Uh, I'm a Taurus, man. You put red in front of me. It's like, <laughs> it was, it made me feel <laughs> it so was devil red. It was red like my hat. Love this hat, by the way. Yeah, well, you know. Wait, who did you tell me I look like when? <laughs> Homestar Runner. Homestar Runner. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's that that's a deep cut. Saw one -o. <laughs> <laughs> that is a deep cut for a lot of former. I feel like that was kids. big time in the homeschool community in general, though, too. Yeah. Homestar yeah. Runner. Uh, what was Strong the Bad was my husband's Strong Bad. Favorite. Yes. That was my husband's favorite. When Strong, Strong Bad reads his mail. <laughs> yeah. So great. So great. And um, the other guy, the, the, Prince, uh, the special oh. needs one. <laughs> He was special needs. He was for so, sure special I needs. I felt like so star runner, but I um, I don't remember all of their names. I remember you, Princess yeah. something Penelope, Prince Princess. Petunia. I just remember. Oh, oh it was know. Coach. It was Coach. That's oh was. yeah, Coach. Coach was the one I was thinking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the cheat. <laughs> the cheat. Remember the cheat? No. Yeah, the cheat was always like messing with Strong Bad. It was kind of like his pet, and he was like this little cheetah ishy, oh, right. like kind of pointy nosed guy. See, I know I don't. I know <laughs> that I have no vivid recollection of Homestar Runner, not because of trauma, but just because of excessive substance abuse, for sure. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> but you know what? If you watched anything Homestar Runner, you'd be right back in it. Oh, for sure. In fact, yeah, I might go. Yeah. I might go look it up. That and Happy Tree Friends. Happy Tree Friends was my other favorite one. Oh, I don't know Happy Tree Friends. Oh, it's it's hilarious. I'm gonna have um, to look, yeah, that. Yeah, you're gonna have to look that up. <laughs> look that up. Okay. It will it will scar you just a little bit. Um, <laughs> Should I be on substance for that? <laughs> <laughs> probably. probably. Okay, word. It'll make it a lot more interesting. <laughs> um, you want to talk about uh, yeah headquarters now? Bring okay. it on. You're Let's like I don't want to talk about Indy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you're like ah. Okay. Here yeah. we go. Here, Here I is am. a mm. picture of Lindsay yes. in front of Honey, the headquarters. The staff Illinois. center. That is mm. the staff center. It was a, the smaller building. The large one was known as a production center. Anyway, it's semantics. It doesn't matter to you guys. But this beyond behind these doors, <laughs> we had a really long head table that was mm. behind these doors. So it, it would literally go past those two windows that are on the sides. And uh, Bill would literally sit right behind those doors. So he would sit mm. at the head table um, like he was Jesus Christ. And then he would look at the rest of the dining hall um, mm. because that first floor, about half of that first floor was all dining, dining stuff. And um, he would always invite me to come and sit up front with him with the delegations and every, you know, all these any dignitaries or delegations that would come through, he would he would request that I sit at the front mm. table with him. And um, then he would find a way to, you know, uh, telescopically remove his hip and go find his my foot and then rub his foot against mine um, and play footsie with me. Well, while, while I'm just like trying to pretend that literally nothing's going on here and I'm just sitting here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just so crazy. It's so yeah. crazy that he would do almost like a power move. Like I'm sitting here with all these dignitaries and important people and I'm still going to rub your foot. It's really odd because, yeah, you're very right. And I, I think even now at, at the age I'm at, I always think, wow, how how was he doing this or what the mm. hell? Because, you know, you're the victim in it. But yeah. whenever I hear someone like yourself or others say, like, Lindsay, he was asserting his authority or he he knew that he could get away with stuff. And so he mm -hmm. was messing around and seeing, you know, this this gave him some energy boost. So I'm trying to be safe for, for yeah, your thank you. Appreciate you that, know, yeah. thing. But like, you know, trying to give him something that, you know, was going on in his own mind. And right. it's so strange to really uh, grasp that mm -hmm. for myself. To know that I was simply an object of his own desire and pleasure. Mm -hmm. Because the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, please don't let anybody see this. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, am I doing anything wrong? What, like, how do I just stay neutral in this? And I know it's not right, but I'm scared of him. And I'm also scared of going home. And I was like, it was just like the impossible situation to be put in. Mm -hmm. um, and I was constantly in that situation. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I felt really empowered. I mean, I'm in my like big sweater with bright colors and I'm wearing my and rainbow hat. shoes and my hat and my necklaces and my jewelry and my nails. <laughs> oh yeah. I felt real. real good. So much makeup. <laughs> so much. <laughs> makeup. No, actually, no, yeah, no, I don't I wear much don't. makeup, but I know you like don't. pink hair. I also had the pink hair. Oh, love it. You know? yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, was there in my pink hair and you know, what was it, this last year? 
This was 2022, actually, October. Oh, this of 2022. was 2022. Okay. Mm -hmm. This and was this... after I had done my interview for the documentary as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I had interviewed in February of that year. So this was months and months later. Oh, that, well, I mean, it, realistically, it's only eight months later after yeah, you went through that whole like process. Eons. It felt yeah. like eons. Mm -hmm. So you, you went back in October 2022. Mm hmm to this i mean really i i mean it was just a uh, a place of i mean the most horrific trauma yeah for you and a, and, a, and a lot of other people i, I mean yep. what was you know i i mentioned how for me it just felt very surreal when i walked up to the training center in yeah. indianapolis what what was the initial feeling for you when when you arrived at at the old headquarters so I when my husband told me that he had um that his company needed him to go back to milwaukee first off mm. i was like oh my gosh milwaukee that's only like an hour and a half to two hour drive down to headquarters and mm. i was like i'm coming with you and we lived in milwaukee for 10 years so i have a few friends there and stuff but i was like yeah. i'm going back honey because i need to go to headquarters and he's like okay are you gonna be okay with that i'm like yeah i'm going and i remember a couple days later i I was talking to Chad because they're just pretty much like best friends. And I was like, so I'm going to Oak Brook. And he's like, wait, when I told him and he was like, um, I'm going to drive up. Is that OK? And I was like, what? You're going to drive up? Like, that's a lot. And he's like, yeah, no, but I've never met you before. We, we've been friends for several years on TikTok. And he was like, I would just love to meet you. And I, I was like, uh, OK. I was like, I could be real weird, bro. I do not know what to expect <laughs> out of myself. I could be a stark, raving, angry person, or I could be a puddle of tears. Like, mm. I don't know. And I don't really want to censor myself in all of this. Like, I was going through really intense therapy at the time, too. Like, tons mm. and tons of EMDR. I was dealing with a lot of the past at the time. Mm. And so anyway, I get down there. I meet with Chad for the first time. I'm literally, <laughs> we had, our flight had been delayed. And was, I don't want to go too long with this, but it was so traumatic for me, even just trying to get there. Our flight had been delayed. It got moved to mm. another uh, state. And so we had to spend the night somewhere else. And literally what I thought was going to be like, oh, I'm going to wake up in the morning and just drive down to Oak Brook. It became, I flew in, landed, grabbed a car. My husband took an Uber to his work and I drove straight to headquarters. Mm. So in driving down, I was, <laughs> I have a lot of playlists on Spotify and I had to go to headquarters playlist. <laughs> and I was like, what did I do to myself? Like I was, I was crying so hard. I was so nervous. Wow. I was petrified because I was like, who does this in their life? Who does, who does this? Mm. Who decides like, I'm going to go back to the scene of the, of the abuse and trauma, right. like cool for me. Um, but there was something about it that I felt so drawn to needing to have to do. And I've realized in my own trauma that I need closure Yes, because one of the things I have never been given is closure on pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And if I could gift this to myself, then hell yes, I was going to gift it. And there are stories that I've never told and probably never will be able to, but, um, there's a lot of memories and a lot of pain, even outside of bill that mm -hmm. I have had to kind of reckon with in my adult life and yeah. thing, moments where I had to decide on make choices. Mm -hmm. And, uh, do I regret them? Where am I okay with the choices that I made? So in getting down there, I was scared. I was scared to see what it was like. I didn't know what to expect and I didn't know how busy it would be. I didn't know who was still there. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not in the know of what's going on at headquarters. I know most of it's down in big Sandy right now, but I know there's still a lot of people that, I mean, Oak Brook is a very affluent area. I don't yes. know if people are very aware, but Oak Brook is expensive AF. Like mm -hmm. basketball players live there. Huge mansions are right down the street from Bill Gothard's headquarters. I mean, his, his property, I'm sure that tons of developers are salivating Absolutely. over the, the moment when they can get their hands on this property because it's so primo. Mm. Um, but anyway, pick up Chad and I'm just like, let's let's just go. So we we pull up and I was instantly uh, like gut punch shocked. Mm. Like and this is my own internal thing. Yeah, it was not pretty. I remember 
headquarters being this magical, beautiful, landscaped, meticulously kept place. Mm. And all the training centers were really like, I mean, they used us all as grunt workers, Mm -hmm. but we had a full landscaping crew on staff at headquarters. So every single pine tree was a complete triangle. Every bush was perfectly manicured. Everything was painted constantly. Mm. Um, It was like, as soon as they finished painting, they started painting the next building again. Um, even the carports and the floors, like the cement got painted. It was just, it was, it was literally Bill Gothard's like, you know, uh, His oasis. of fabulousness. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, like, we're pulling up and I'm like, Woo! I can see the trunk on that pine tree. <laughs> like, what's, going, what's going on? Um, and things were just really dilapidated, like mm. just had gone to, to shit. Windows were broken. Mm. Air conditioners were all crusty and looking sideways. And it just... I even now like thinking about it, I was just like, what? what's going on? What's it? Mm. I, I, I know that it's not been taken care of for a long time and clearly it was showing, but like even the curtains that were still hanging were kind of like askew and stained and mm. really bizarre. And even though at the time I probably could have said to myself like, <laughs> yeah, the world's really shown this place, you know, where it's meant to be, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's really given it to them, but I felt uh, like a, terror about it Hmm. and i'll explain that a little bit further in but i felt like this weird fear of like oh my god why why is this happening why is it so torn apart my memories have a lot of bad memories here but the grounds were always so beautiful and that had a calmness in it for me that sometimes would be my like my escape and my oasis but anyway we pulled up and (laughs) i think even in one of the videos if you go to my tiktoks i have tiktoks that show videos of like chad and i pulling up and walking through the training center you hear chad go fuck <laughs> as we pulled up into the parking space and i was just like i so i turned off he turned off the camera and i was like are you ready for this and he was like i, I i'll follow you because you know this was my my journey my trip and right so i was like okay so i got out i got out and i walked up to the back door of the production center which is where i worked for three years mm. and i tried the door and, and even walking up again that pine tree was completely like just dilapidated and falling apart and there were there were like weeds growing through every crack in the cement and mm. it, it just it was not it didn't have perfection anymore and it, it i know that it just that it's such a reflection of the decay that's happening within right. this this ministry. Well, it's almost I, like the chaos of the building and the grounds finally matched the chaos that you were experiencing. No kidding. Internally while you were there. Yeah. You know? It had finally broken through itself, yeah. you know, and just was going to shit. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, how do you guys even think you're going to sell this place looking like this? I mean, I've sold homes before and they look way better than this thing. You're not going to sell this <laughs> very easily. But okay. But I tried the back door and it wouldn't open. And um, Chad's like, oh, man, you know, like, that's too bad. And I I don't know. I just had a, th- I don't know. It's Lindsay brain. And I was just like, well, <laughs> there's more doors. And I walked over to the shipping department. Door. Yeah, I just yep. walked over to the shipping department and uh, the door opened. And I was like. I remember looking at Chad before I said anything because just like, (laughs) should we go? Shall we? Yeah. I was like, you ready? And he's like, after you. (laughs) I was like, all right. And I, even when we walked in, I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm, I am okay to be here. Mm. I, I have ownership to be in this place. Mm. Um, And I also know that no one is going to kick me out. I know that for sure because I know the personalities and the 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 docileness of mm-hmm. IBL people. They can be very cruel when they have their mental hold on you, but right. when they don't have that anymore, they are so powerless. Yeah. And I felt that and I walked in with a lot of ownership um and autonomy of myself and we started calling out like hello. I mean, I think Chad even said it felt like Scooby Doo because we we're just like hello yeah. anybody. <laughs> um and we just I said look I don't know what's going to happen in here, but I'm going to pretend that I'm giving you a tour because mm-hmm. I know the place so well. I'm just be like, and here's the, you know, this department, da, da, da. So we just, we did, we recorded a little bit. And when we came down this hallway that I have walked down every single day to go to the staff, to go to the staff meetings with Bill, I was just like, this is giving me panic. Like mm-hmm. th- this is freaking out because this was the everyday. And the longer I stayed there, 
the more trepidation I would have every morning of walking down that long hallway and potentially seeing Bill's face in that room. Mm. Um, amongst other people, because I was not a lot of people's favorite <laughs> at headquarters, um, because I was a Gothard girl. And so I could feel that like <laughs> sort of Cersei walk of shame without having done anything that Cersei ever did. You know, it's just like, <laughs> everybody hates me and I know why, but there's nothing I can do about it. And so you just, you just always felt that judgment. Um, there were obviously kind people too. I don't want to like dismiss them, but it, it, it gave me a lot of anxiety having to face that every day. So we yeah. go to walk into that meeting room and it's gone. It's gone. It's just, it's all, um, they just tore it out like pallets and stuff. Yeah. They tore up the carpet. Everything's out. Like they just basically are using it for storage space for materials now. Huh. And so it's just like a laminate floor. Um, and I was like, whoa, this is trippy. I remember all the red carpet. I remember doing handbell practices up on, you know, the little platform over there. And like, just. Oh, just... man, I forgot about how how much they loved handbells. Oh, yeah, I was in the handbell choir. It's even in the documentary, me playing Incredible. handbells at Knoxville. Yeah, with my I wish I could die face. <laughs> <laughs> I have such a nonplussed face. I'm just like, somebody save me. <laughs> somebody stop it. Somebody make it stop. Make it stop before That's I do. <laughs> <laughs> what is, um, um, yeah. What, what is this? Oh, yeah. That's Brook Manor. That is the mm. second. It was the first house I lived in. And then I was moved to another home and I was the house mother of that other house. And then I was moved back up here when I got a blood clot and Bill Gothard wanted me to be a whole lot closer to him. Um, mm. His office is the building across the way. So directly in front of this on the other side of the yard is the staff center and his mm. office, um, which I think we might see in another picture, but probably not. Again, if you go to my TikTok, you'll see all of these stories, but the top left window, that little dormer window up in the top, the creaminess over there, mm -hmm. that's the room I stayed in when I first moved back over there. And Bill was just adamant to, you know, he wanted me to come and pray with him for my health and blah, blah, blah. And then um, I eventually wanted, because that room had like three other beds in it. So I had, there were a lot of girls in that room and I was not about mm -hmm. it. And I finally was able to finagle myself to the front. If you look at the front of the building underneath the awning, there's a mm -hmm. window on the corner, right? That became my bedroom. Mm -hmm. That's where I stayed for the rest of my time at headquarters. And Bill Gothard could see when I was in my room, which on hindsight, I realized was probably a shitty thing for me to move to that room. <laughs> yeah, shot yourself but, on that one. Yeah, yeah, but I also was like, I don't want to be around all these girls. They're tattletales, just like Indy. Yeah. Like, like they, they watch everything you do and yeah. they think that they're being righteous women by tattling on each other when you do something they deem to be ungodly. And I'm like, I can't, I can't deal with this. I'm surprised I didn't have a mental breakdown at headquarters. Like, oh. I mean, I did have breakdowns, but not in front of people. Well, yeah, I was, I was about to say, I'm, I'm sure you probably were having a series of panic attacks and probably just didn't realize what was happening. You know? Yeah, I would totally agree. So again, yeah. in this, this is that far corner. So the, the window on the left and that first window uh, to, to the right on the left. <laughs> the middle one? Anyway, yeah, the two on the left were my room. So okay. I had I had two windows in the room. Yeah, and I, I loved that room. It was really beautiful. But again, Bill Bill could see me in there. and mm. um, Or at least see me when, when my light was on. And would call and ask me, well, Lindsay, <laughs> I'd love for you to come over and pray with me. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gothard, I'll be over in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> throw on my navy skirt or my khaki skirt or whatever get my shoes on i wish i could have just put like you know combat boots on but yeah i was about um, to say not not <laughs> really needed the shoes um i know but, yeah. right um but yeah there were times where i'm like should i wear it? can you remember um back in the 90s like uh, girls had like those prairie boot boots yeah. I don't know if you remember like those yeah, tiny like the little lace -up ones. Yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. they would come up to like high above the ankle mm -hmm. like i so badly wanted to wear those over there um but the idea of him clacketing his shoe against my prairie boot. Also yeah. And he would have figured a way to get gave those me things off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was, it was, um, the out of body experience I had was actually taking Chad to where my office was. And mm. I, I don't remember if I said this before. Yeah. That was my old office. And literally one? that chair on the right was in my office. Are this you, is 2022. It was in my office from 97 to 99. 
God's honest Whoa. truth. I have pictures proving that that chair, because Chad, I don't know that Chad didn't believe me, but I was like, dude, this chair was in my fucking office and I can prove it. And when we got that's back crazy. home, I sent him pictures. I'm like, see, that's the top of the chair. He's like, oh my God. I was like, yeah, they don't change anything here. That was I my mean, office. And, and and here you can actually see the red carpet. Yeah. And, and sure this can. was throughout every single training center, this Everywhere. same carpet. It was very plush and it was very red. Whoever sold this to him, holy shit, man. They made some oh, yeah. chaos. But yes, Absolutely. it was very plush. Like I, mm -hmm. I won't lie. When like when I would work late nights, I would take my shoes off and just walk around barefoot because the carpet felt so good. <laughs> that's a that's a bold move on your part. Well, Bill didn't you know. work in this building. I didn't have to worry about never him showing know. up. <laughs> I mean, good. Imagine him. He actually never came over there. In the three years I was barefoot. there, he Woo! never came to this floor ever. Never did. But no. And in the three years I was oh. there, he never, yeah, he never showed up. Um, but I, the funny thing is when I, when I walked up to the third floor, we had taken a stairwell and even the stairwell, I had, I had forgotten about the stairwell. Like I knew where it was, but when I opened it up, I forgot that the carpet changed to like this, like really oatmeal-y kind of burnt oatmeal brown. Mm. And it had a smell about it that just brought back all yeah. the memories and i was like mm -hmm. oh my god so many things happened in the stairwell i totally forgot like when i yelled at one of the girls and when i stormed off from somebody or you know i just so many different like someone passed me a diet coke <laughs> and anyway but as we walked up to the third floor and i opened it i was like hey, and so this is pretty much where i existed on the third mm -hmm. floor this is where my office was like departments really stuck with their people so you didn't really wander too much around the the pc but as I walked up there, I told Chad, I don't know how to explain this right now, but you know, in the very beginning of the Titanic, when they see the ship all busted up at the bottom yeah. uh -huh. and then all of a sudden it starts to come to life. So it's like dilapidated. And then you start to see the paint come into the frame and then the double doors open and everybody's waving and they're like, come on into the dining room. I was like, this is happening to me right now in real time. I can see these different people and I was naming names. This is where they sat. This is where this person sat. This is this. And then my office was right over here through the corner. Mm -hmm. And then my bosses was to the left. And then over here is da 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 and purchasing. And we played a prank on them and then da da da. And I was like, I, I know exactly what this looked like. I could literally redecorate it exactly how it looked. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, this is really tripping me out. And it felt, it felt <laughs> surreal for you too, probably. And so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yet, so it's so shitty now. It stinks. Mm -hmm. The carpet's faded everywhere. The filing cabinets are gone. Most of the furniture is gone. It's like a freaking fire sale happened. In and there. I think that that to me is like the the stark difference between your headquarters experience and my Indianapolis experience. Because I yeah. walk into a place that looks so modern, so nice. Yeah. Except for the elevators, for whatever reason, they left all the wood paneling, the gold handrail, that. that weird grate over the, the light. dropped grate. Yeah, like drop so paneling, strange. but let's put a drop grate in here. <laughs> that was the only thing. That, and the mirrors. That, yes. God, I remember the mirrors in there. Yes. Very strange. Very, very you, strange. You, I don't know if you felt this, but like if you were ever in there. You couldn't really try to get away with something because if someone else was in there, they could mm -hmm. see from different angles what was going on in that thing. And oh, yeah. I felt like that was very intentional. Uh, I would not be surprised at all. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of I would say a lot of elevators, especially in hotel rooms, have mirrors. But there, but there not may like be a the reason triway, they left those like up. a double and a triway. It's, it's weird. It, and those elevators were so unreliable, and they had the service <laughs> elevator. But that oh, was, yeah. you know, it's interesting that the stairwell like triggered those memories for you because mm -hmm. when I walked into the stairwell in Indianapolis, I just started having these memories of things that had happened in that yeah. stairwell, you know, meeting mm -hmm. up with girls, um, you know, my buddies that were in the life focus program with me running up and down the stairs, um, you know, having conversations in there with people we weren't supposed to be talking to necessarily yep. and having to run off as soon as we heard one of the other doors open, you know? Yep. Oh um, my God. Yes. Yes. Yeah, at one point was... my husband had caught a, um, well, he wasn't my husband at the time, but he had caught a mouse that was up on the third floor where he, he worked at the other end of the building. Mm. Um, and I happened to walk by and I was like, what's the commotion? And he's like, Oh, we found a mouse. And 
I'm a, he, he, because he loved to tease me and I'm someone who falls into the teasing. Um, he was like, yeah, we're going to take it out and kill it or something like that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, you're not. And he's like, I'm going to go out and just, you know, just like smash him in my hands. And I was like, no, you're not. And I was like, you have to let poor Mousy go. And I was like chasing him. I think this was on a weekend. So like the higher ups were not there. So we kind of uh -huh. knew that we could, you know, get away with kind of teasing each other. And I remember him running into the stairwell. And I think I had either a, sh uh, like a, a extra a shirt that I had been wearing or I had a towel with me and I was snapping him with it and like hitting him with it to oh, wow. let the I was like let the mouse go let it let him freaking go you know like not cussing obviously it's a Christian girl but um at one point I think I even got like handsy with him where I like grabbed his arm and I'm like let the mouse go like I'm not even messing Whoa. with you like let him go and so <laughs> then he finally got outside and like he was like I was gonna let him go you know just like <laughs> but he really Chill out really mouse. made me angry <laughs> can't believe you were you were actually physically touching I, a man. I wanted to save the mouse. <laughs> was this mouse incident before or after you had had your first kiss? Way before. Before, Way before. Way before. Yeah. Oh, the, wow. the kiss literally happened like days before we were so, sent away from headquarters. That, that was that, a lot that of built up tension is what that mouse is. Yeah. <laughs> kind of That's probably was. was. He's too damn cute. <laughs> <laughs> What's a girl going to do? <clears throat> Make out with him, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the ceiling of this overhang. Yeah. The paint peeling. This the 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 ground, like all the gravel was just like the cement was just like breaking up. And the, is that this little still the manor? That bird. No, this this is across from the manor. Okay. So this is where Bill's office is. This teeny little sliver of a window uh uh Slap, uh -huh. what do you call him? That, that thing on the right, that's his office. So, the office ah. that you're seeing to the right of the door was Mrs. Heinegger's okay. office, which was his quote secretary when I was there. She's his sister. Um, they finally really? stopped, and I think in the, the early 90s, they stopped with female students being his secretary. Like, hmm. They clearly somebody on the board knew that he was not being appropriate. Yep. And so they put Mrs. Heinegger, his sister, as the secretary. So she sat outside his office by that window. I had no idea. I, I did not know yep. that because obviously there were there were all the issues with his brother, right? Yeah. Being an absolute mm -hmm. monster. Yep. Um, but I didn't realize that his sister actually worked with yep. him. She was his secretary and she lived on the property. Did she travel with him as well? No. Oh, no. she didn't. He had he had a guy team that would travel with him and <laughs> sometimes a girl. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's exactly um, why I was asking. Uh, I mean, yeah, but that was usually down to Indy. Um, I don't know. I know that a few other of my gal pals at headquarters traveled with him to some of the other seminars at different points of time. Okay. Um, so he always had, you know, some female in his, his harem. In his cadre. Mm hmm. Yeah, his posse. Um, this last one that I wanted to show. Um, I'm yeah. so glad that you were able to send it because we had a little technical difficulty. We had more pictures. <laughs> we um, did, and this is the last one that I was actually able uh, to include to to show everyone. Uh, here is Lindsay. Look at that. Now, how old were you here, Lindsay? I was twenty one. Twenty oh. or twenty one. And I look like I'm 15, but you know, you, you do. <laughs> I but also, Pete keeps us looking like children. <laughs> that's a very alluring pose as well. The way well, that bent over like that. Could, I, but I also, mean, no, 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 don't go there. I was being cute. Okay. Oh, I'm, you can't be cute in the shiny, cute. happy people cult. No, <laughs> not allowed to be cute. That could create a stumbling. This would have been a stumbling block for me. I'm going to tell you <laughs> that right now. In my like, in my like 1999 mom jeans. Sweet. <laughs> Yep, that's right. Wait, oh, those are pants. We need to get you help. Even, yeah, it's I jeans. That, I thought that was a skirt. No, it's jeans. How are you allowed I to was, wear these? Honey, because after three years of being at headquarters, I knew the ropes. Mm. Bill was not there. 
Um, he was out of town. I had already been kicked out of headquarters and I went up for several days to visit some of my girlfriends that were still at headquarters that I missed dearly because I was ripped away from headquarters. I was at Indianapolis for five months and I really, really missed them because mm. I was ripped away from them. Right. Um, and so I was able to go back up and spend a few days just before Christmas. So it was a skeleton crew there. And my girlfriend who shall remain nameless, she and I put on jeans and we knew how to slink through the ever fabulously fully manicured pine trees of headquarters because there is a nice little trail. Not anymore because you can see right through those things. But um, we snuck up there and we took pictures of ourselves leaning on Bill Gothard's car. Wow. Just just honestly in defiance. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. He had been doing. And, and the fact that I'm wearing jeans, that was obviously intentional. Uh-huh. And I didn't even know that I would be the person I am right now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I just knew that this man was not going to own the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And so you did this pose on his yeah. car. Just like, here you... I am. At Golden Mills. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope I get to show him this someday. And the, and the picture that did not upload is me in October of 2022. Yes. At the same carport, exactly where Bill's car was parked. Uh huh. And I'm sitting in front of a Maserati. Yes. Yeah. Look how far it, you've it, come. It came fucking full circle. That's crazy. That's yeah. so wild. Yeah. Um. So I will say, I will say, in like I know because we probably need to wrap up, but in when I left and I got back home, I had this like really overwhelming fear of headquarters oh. going away for good. And even though it was shitty and everything's dilapidated, I wasn't able to go into the staff center. If you guys noticed, like I went into the production yeah. center and we walked mm -hmm. around there, but the staff center was locked. All the doors were locked. I'm not going to be any. And um, I was able to peek into Bill's office, but it was a really hazy window and I couldn't really mm -hmm. see into the office. But I did point out to Chad, I'm like, that's where the velvet couch was. This is where Bill's desk was. And I was like, I can't look in this window any further. Like even trying to talk about it now, I feel like I can't breathe. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, in leaving, I, I actually told my therapist, I don't understand why I'm scared of, I, of headquarters going away. Yeah. Like when it gets sold, when it gets turned into something else, I mean, I should be celebrating it. And so we dug in deeper and it really came down to, I was afraid that if it went away, no one would believe my story because mm. I wouldn't be able to point out the things that I could prove that I had been there. Yeah. yeah. Um, you lose the validation at that point, potentially. Right. Like who's going to yeah. ever believe me if I can't say that's there and I know it. Mm. And then we walk in and boom, it's there. Like the fact right. that I walked in and the chair was still there. Like <laughs> that was not on the bingo card of going to headquarters. Right. Um, you know, and then when Chad and I stood across, we stood at my, it's on my TikTok, but we stood at my window at Brook Manor and he, he's so jovial. God bless Chad, because I think I would have been, an, I would have had a very different experience at headquarters if Chad had not been there. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably would have slunk down to the ground and just cried for hours and needed to be rescued by, I don't know, the police. <laughs> I'm like, ma'am, are you okay? I'm like, I'm having an existential crisis. Um, but I stood there and I just looked over as an adult, as a grown woman at 45 years old and at, well, 43. <laughs> but I stare, I looked at that window that was not that far across. And in my mind, I was thinking it was actually farther. Oh. And it's it's a good, a good distance. But I was like, huh, how... How at 20, with the mind of like a 14-year-old, 15-year-old, how in the world did I navigate this? Mm -hmm. Because I look at it now and I'm like, this is so obviously wrong. Mm -hmm. So obviously wrong. And I was prey to a very manipulative, narcissistic, but very calculated predator. Yep. And I don't care what anyone tries to say about my story. I know it to be true. Even if headquarters gets demolished, which someday it will be demolished. Right. Um, and once the documentary came out, I felt kind of like a, a release of it doesn't matter if anybody believes me. I don't have to point to a room. I know what happened to me. Right. Yep. I don't need anyone to authenticate me. I don't need a location to authenticate. Mm -hmm. I know my truth, Yeah, but it was hard to come to that. Thank God for therapy. It sounds like, you know, the, the moment of, you know, let's say peak emotion for you was looking into 
Bill Gothard's office. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is that, yeah. Um, I think as far as like the panic and trauma part, yeah. you know, like seeing headquarters, or, like seeing my office and things like that, it was kind of like this weird, I don't know, it reminded me of like, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but I remember as a kid, my parents would like drive back to their childhood home and be like, oh, there was a big field here. And now there's a <laughs> super Walmart. And you're like, cool, right, yeah. cool, dad. <laughs> nice. You know, and I, so I felt like I felt a little bit like that where I'm like, oh, my gosh, Chad, this is where this happened and this. And I'm like, he's mm -hmm. going to think I'm such a freak. Um, yeah. You know, because, and, and, and it, there was almost like walking around the Indianapolis training center. It was like almost like a giddiness. Yes. Like, oh. Like, oh, I remember this. It's still cool. here. Oh my, oh my God, that's over there. The wood paneling. I reckon the elevators look the same. This top floor, I fully remember. Right. And it's weird, right? And, you know, like, why do we comments, get that feeling? <laughs> I don't think it's Stockholm syndrome necessarily. I think it's just yeah. because it is like such a big part of, like it or not, traumatic or not, it's such a part of our core memories. Yeah, I would agree you with know? that. Because it was um, coupled with trauma too, I think, and that's why we remember it so distinctly. And I and or I not just know, in my case, <laughs> but you knew certain things were there that weren't right. like things mm -hmm. you couldn't find, but you're like, I know it was there. I know um, this was there. Yeah, yeah, like it's got to be crazy. somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit, no way. Um, but even with my with my therapist, like trying to tell her, I like I broke down and I was just like, I'm really scared. If it goes away, then then my story won't matter to anybody. Mm. And and yet, even when I was there, I was like, why does any of this matter so much to me? But I was like, it really does. Yeah. And it's because it's tangled with trauma. Right. It wasn't just great memories. Mm -hmm. But when we see those things that we sort of thought, like, I think at our age, too, you know, <laughs> more mine than yours. But I feel like at our age, too, we're just like, do I really remember this accurately? That's what because I because we know that the older we on. get, we're yeah. like, yeah, do I really remember that? Did any of that even happen for real? And, yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. then you go there and you're like, shit. Oh, it happened. I remember all uh -huh. of this. Yeah. I like I could probably be blindfolded and walk through the entire PC and know exactly where I am. Hmm. It's terrifying. Um. But yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It's such Fun a times. <laughs> it's such a weird thing going yeah. back there, you know, <laughs> and for me, the the most emotional moment for me was when I went around to the back side of the Indianapolis mm. compound and looked up at the windows that I know. I know one of those was a prayer room that I'd spent a weekend by yeah. myself staring out that window. Uh, during the day, just waiting for people to walk by so I could, yeah. I could see humans, you know, um, Anything. but it was weird. Like for me, it didn't create any panic or um, anxiety. It was more for me. It was like just this overwhelming sense of gratitude that mm -hmm. I don't have to live in that kind of fear anymore. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was for me. It was I mean, it was. It was pretty overwhelming. It's uh, amazing though, to to feel that, is. right? Yeah, to stand yeah. there and recognize because I think when we're in those moments, I, I think that was kind of where I was feeling too across from Bill's office, at, at, you know, outside my window, where I'm just like, I'm so far removed from this. Yeah, like, but I remember being in those rooms and and you know, you and yours going, will there be life after this? Mm -hmm. Like, will anyone care? Will I ever get out? Will like, mm -hmm. d is there anything else to hope for? To wish? Am I for, ever going to be okay? Yeah. yeah. Will mm -hmm. anyone care? Will I ever be loved? Will I ever be heard? Mm -hmm. Will I ever matter? Mm -hmm. God damn it! How yeah. old were we? And that's that's what we were thinking between the ages of what sixteen and twenty. Yeah. Like, fuck these people for doing legitimately yes. to our brains. Mm -hmm. While we were still developing the, like, I know why I have panic attacks and anxiety, man. Like this is where it started. Yep. You know, and how beautiful to be able to stand outside that window and be like, but I did, did, did you in that room think that you'd be that standing out there? Absolutely not. At some point you no. couldn't have even fathomed it. And not only did we survive, but we overcame. And I think that's the 100. bigger piece, right? Yeah. Because there's a, there's a huge difference between just making it yeah. and overcoming. Yeah. You know?
and really um, being victorious through it, you know, coming out on yeah. the other side, like mm -hmm. successful, having our shit together. I mean, well, sort of, I do. Kind of <laughs> That's a that you know what that's I valid. Love you. That's I love valid. You, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> you so special. <laughs> but no, uh, but really, but like really to be to like you said to just like really conquer it. Yeah. It's like I said in the documentary mm -hmm. was like no one, no one thought I could or couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. No one dreamed that I could or that I couldn't because they didn't think I could be an artist. I was right. just meant to be some like you know little pushover housewife. Yeah. And I, and I, I was, I was uh, starting to give into all of it, mm -hmm. but you know, up until, you know, Mr. Well, Colt Chronicles <laughs> came along. Oh, uh, really Mr. Thought... Colt Chronicles, <laughs> Mr. The Colt Chronicles, actually. Mr. The Colt Chronicles, That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, just to be clear. But I, in, in, even with him getting into our relationship, I really thought like at some point he's gonna, he's gonna shift. Yeah. I really want to, I really want to believe that he's not going to be that guy, but I have to be really on my guard because maybe he will be at some point, but yeah, to stand outside of that That's so many fear, years right? later, uh, yeah, to stand outside of it so many years later and just really realize that as Chad so eloquently tells me all the time, eloquently tells me, um, they tried to break us, but they did not succeed. Yeah. They just made us stronger. Mm hmm to into becoming the people that we truly were meant to be. And I love that you and I have found our authenticity. Yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, that as, as difficult, as traumatic as it all was in a twisted sort of way, I'm grateful for it because I know I yeah. wouldn't be the person that I am now if I hadn't yeah. gone through all of that. You know? Absolutely. I know uh, it's a hard pill to swallow in a weird way. It is <laughs> sometimes for me, I'm like, huh. but if I hadn't gone through all that, would I have just like come to some of these conclusions in a different way? May maybe, maybe, but I but might not, not have been the freaking Taurus bullheaded force <laughs> that I choose to be now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like <laughs> try shut uh, me up now. Good luck. <laughs> you can't. I've tried. You can't y'all. You can't shut her up. <laughs> It, nope. It's not going to happen. He's like, um, Lindsay, I'm tired. I need to go to sleep. I'm like, but I have a few more things to say, Davey. Oh, no, no. We're good. We're still good. Because uh, I've still got to I've still got to say thank you to Bipolar Plus Me for the super Aww. sticker. Thank you so much. And uh, Brandy LVT also sent a super chat asking, did Bill arrange or have to approve of marriages? Lindsay, I'm going to let you take that because I know the answer is yes. Depends on who you were. Depends on how close you were to him, depends on your parents and whether or not they wanted to give Bill the ability to bless a marriage or something. Some some people with an ATI wouldn't even get married unless Bill did bless their marriage. Mm -hmm. um, I <laughs> uh, Bill approached my fiance because we both worked at headquarters. Then we both were sent away from headquarters. And months later, we did get engaged. But Bill actually sent a letter of basically cease and desist to my <laughs> to my fiance saying she's not ready yet. And I have I am her spiritual father and blah, blah, blah. And she has many, many things to learn. And so he didn't think that it was the right timing for us to get married because I had many more years of single service for the Lord. Um, he was trying to insert himself at that point yes. and thank God for Mr. The Cult Chronicles because he was like, he just ignored it. And thankfully he never told As me because should. I probably would have torn down headquarters with my bare hands at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would have been the, um, the Tasmanian devil in the Looney Tunes and I would have lost my shit. <laughs> um, so it just depended if, if people wanted to truly give that gift that to him, Mm -hmm. then yeah, he would absolutely do it. Oh, he would and absolutely sometimes he would insert, insert himself. Oh absolutely. yeah, definitely. That was, it was a part, yeah. that was another power trip for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, and I think it got worse question. the older that he got, you know, the, the older that he got, I think it, he became more, um, insertive into people's relationships. Yeah. Um, I thought this was an interesting one from Christopher Jones. Uh, Christopher was in ATI, I spent about a month at headquarters in the summer of 2000. He knows Bryce. Wondering if you were there then, and he recalls a woman making a similar confession that you did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I wish I could see your face because if I could see your face, I might be able to tell you. But I actually left. I don't think that you were there. 
And how unfortunate that yet another person had to give a similar confession to me. Um, I'm not surprised. You put a lot of young people into spaces like this, uh -huh. that they're confined, they're restricted, you know, hormones are raging. This is just a, a yes. physiological thing that happens in, in human beings. We're all going to find attractions. So, yes. you know, it's just, it's absolutely stupid that they thought they could just somehow corral we're us into security culture. Normal teenager shit. We don't even know why we're this way. We just are going nuts. Yeah. Um, but uh, for some reason, Christopher Jones sounds really familiar, though. Do you have short kind of sandy blonde red hair? <laughs> anyway, I was there in 1999. If you had pillowy lips, you would have remembered him. Sure. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have pillowy lips, Decolt, sorry. Out, so, out. sorry. Yeah, you're out, buddy. Sorry. Um, but I was there from, um, I believe it was July or August of 99 till November of 1999. So I was already mm. gone in 2000. I was married in September of 2000. Yeah. So that's, it's interesting. I, I don't remember what months I was at Indianapolis. I just know I was there in 1999. Yeah. Um, oh, also Christopher, if it's the Christopher I'm thinking of, you went on the Romania trip in 1996. So ooh, interesting. 1996, 97. Um, Anyway, y'all might might need to make a might need to make a social media connection there, Chris. You can email me the the email, chronicles at gmail.com. Yeah. Or connect. you could DM Lindsay on uh TikTok on or, or yeah, or, or Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, either way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, shoot shoot a message over. Uh I'm happy to talk with anybody and everybody. And I will say to you, oh. I connected with Bridget. Did you really? That's not me. <laughs> Darn, so, Chris. Sorry about it. I feel yeah. bad that yet another woman had to give the same confessions that I did, but am I surprised? No, I'm not. Um, but I did connect with, with Bridget. Bridget. We're gonna actually, yeah, we're gonna talk tomorrow. She is the one that um when we originally talked about going back to headquarters, Chad and uh -huh. I, she left some comments in your comment section about her and her sister were the ones that came to uh, from Atlanta to Indianapolis with me. And then we went on really? to headquarters together. Yes. So she, she was 16 and her sister was 14 or 12. I was 18 at the time. So wow. we are actually going to have a call tomorrow and I cannot wait to talk to her. I'm so excited. That's that's so cool. It's it's really cool yeah. getting to connect with people that we probably wouldn't connect with otherwise. Yeah. Just from just from people being brave enough to tell their stories. I, I mean, it's 100. so cool. Yeah. Um, you know what's it's not brave. cool though, Lindsay, So brave. That I did what? so brave. That I did want to just briefly address, and we won't go into detail here necessarily, okay. unless you've got some details you want to share. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, so, Lindsay and. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Lindsay and I, Bryce, Chad, we've uh, we've done a couple, a few episodes uh, regarding the illustrious Miss Holly McLean. Please do not look up her social media. Do not look up her YouTube. Do not watch her videos. That's the disclaimer and PSA that I have to it's say. It's boring and not worth we it. We talk about Holly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> her eldest son reached out to you and a couple of folks that you know. He also reached out to me via youtube comments apologizing for his mother's behavior um and interestingly enough what it sounds like is that he is completely maybe not completely but mostly estranged from his mother they do not see eye to eye he completely disagrees with her he's called her out multiple times he even apologized for her behavior on my youtube comments and i was wondering uh lindsay if you could provide some additional color there. Yes, I have much color to spread. Excellent. Um, <laughs> so it actually was not me that he reached out to initially. It was actually Laura who reached out to him because mm -hmm. his mother was continuing to harass some of us from the documentary and she's extending her harassment to our family members. So in, in defense of, of those family, of our docu siblings, as we call of us, they, they, cast from the documentary which is weird to say because we're not really cast members but um w laura really took up the helm and she was just like a viking warrior princess and was like oh, i'm gonna reach out to her son and i like it was it was amazing because his response back was he was aware that she was doing something but not quite sure exactly what it was and then he because of that email was like I need to go live on TikTok and I would love for all of you guys to join me and honestly that it was I'm still sort of speechless about last night because yeah. Almost all of us from the documentary all of us survivors um from the from IBLP and ATI in the doc 
we're all on his live together. And wow. it was the first time that we were kind of all in an actual like live group together. A, uni a united front. And here we are, Holly. but, but not even that, but like, here we are talking to him uh -huh. and Holly's been trying to do this for months Yeah, to get us to actually talk to her. And we're like, mm -hmm. hell no, you are not safe. You have an absolute bias. You have harassed and, and gaslit. Like the fumes are nauseous with mm -hmm. the level of gaslighting from this woman and to have her son, which is not his responsibility at all, but to have him tell us that he is sorry for what his mm -hmm. mother is doing to us as you know, that she is re victimizing us in so many ways. And, you know, yes, a lot of us are going to be sloppy. This is, we're finding our voices for the first time in our lives. And for us to sit back and try to be quiet as the bully decides to like try to like tear up the shop, that's really, really difficult to do. Mm. I have had to literally bite my tongue, sit on my hands, not go to the computer, not make TikTok rebuttals because I know that she's the troll under the bridge. And the mm. moment you start to pass over the bridge, the troll's going to rear their ugly head. And that's what feeds the flame of Holly yes. McLean. Yes. So for her son to just be so empathetic, mm. compassionate and understanding to us and what she is doing to us. He's a journalist, by the way. And he An has, actual journalist. Yes, a legit journalist. And he also has um, an Oscar-nominated documentary that he was a part of uh, oh, how regarding cool. banning books in Florida. And wow. it's uh, it, it, he's an incredibly eloquent individual, of course. And so, for someone like that of that of that caliber to basically he literally said last night i disavow what my mother is doing that's so cool that is so much power it's power and i i can only imagine if my mother was doing something like this i would be on the first train to where she lives and i would be like knock it the heck off what right. are you doing and sometimes family is the one that can actually penetrate through things because mm -hmm. the ability to either you know, honestly and genuinely get through and or embarrass them or prove to them, like, you know, why are you doing this? And I can't or just reason this. with them. But right. Course, Re have is, an actual conversation. She, yeah. She's beyond that because from what I understand, mm -hmm. didn't she essentially block him on all social media? She did. She pretty immediately did when he called her out about it and tried oh. to have a conversation. But you know what? This is this is uh Joe McLean is his name. Joe McLean TV is who he his uh TikTok mm -hmm. username is. Please and, go and follow him. Yep. He's mm -hmm. going to start making videos. Um right. he told us that he's going to be watching Shiny Happy People again and watching the stuff that his mother has produced. Mm -hmm. Um and make rebuttal uh videos about it. So um, I cannot wait to see what he says. I don't want him to ever feel obligated to have to do this because of course it puts even a bigger wedge for him between him and, and, and a family member. She's not mm -hmm. my mother, but I feel like if it was my mother, this would be a very difficult place to be. It's a, a spot to be in, yep. but yet I thought about it so much today because it was so surreal to have him saying, uh, we had a two hour live last night about this. Wow. And I felt like at some point my head was just melting out because I couldn't believe. And I said, I think I said it to him at the end. I was like, we have been hoping for a superhero warrior in regards to her because it just feels like no one can get through to her. She yeah. is so blocked in her mm -hmm. bias. Yeah. And I just think that she has taken it so personally mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's a personal vendetta now. So it's going to be really, I, I'm interested to see what plays out, but I also am not, I don't ever want him to feel obligated. I hope I know that he understands that, but th this is a mission that he's now taking upon himself. And as a journalist, <laughs> I shudder to think about what Joe McLean might might do in the future. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, um, we've, and we've talked to her nephew before. Yes, um, yeah. which was a, a really interesting conversation. It was kind of short lived because he had a, a little family emergency. emergency yeah. uh, but you know, I would I would absolutely love to get Joe on an episode. Uh, yeah, talk to him, hear his input, his insight, kind of the history behind who is Holly McLean. What was it like growing up with this individual? Um, and does it even surprise you that she's acting the way that she's acting right now, which it I doesn't. can't imagine it does. I can't it imagine it. It surprises. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, but you know, what's interesting, like, um, with all of us 
in the live last night, I mean, mm-hmm. one of the resounding things that we all had was a, you have family now. All of us are your new family. We absorb right. you into our docu siblings because we know what it's like to have a narcissistic, fairly sociopathic parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and those that live in denial and defense of the way that they have chosen to behave and live and believe in their lives. This is not a hit on Christianity. This is a hit on behavior. Mm-hmm. This is a hit on what is truly a, a, like a, a corrupt moral compass. You have, you know, when people really do decide to absolutely suffocate their empathy and their ability to hear people's pain and Mm -hmm. decide instead that they want to go and make that pain worse because they think that their truth is more important than people they don't know. Yes. I mean, you have something fundamentally wrong in your soul. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I grieve for Joe because I can't imagine what he's about to face, but he's choosing that. That's his choice, yep. you know, and, it and, I, like and I appreciate it beyond all, all measure. And, and it sounds like he is well equipped to handle. It. I mean, if he's a journalist, oh, he's he's, he's, he's seen this stuff. He knows it inside and out, you know? Oh, yeah. So I, I just think it's so, so, so cool that someone, especially an immediate family member and even more so, you know, we know how these, you know, fundamental families look at the eldest child. You yeah. know, that should be the shining beacon, the example for the younger siblings, the leader of, you know, whatever. Um, and for him to be the one that is calling her out, holding her accountable is uh, yeah. is so cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I hope that, um, you know, at some point soon I can uh, I can have a conversation with him on the podcast, um, sure. you know, and uh, would would love to have you uh, involved in, in that as well, Lindsay. Um, you know, I'll come back anytime, Davey. I love it. I love it. Hey, but also, what, are uh, you the oldest fan? Are you the oldest child in your family? I am. You are. So am I. I Dude. This this oldest child syndrome. Yeah. We always tend to be the black sheep, but it's also because we caught the brunt of all the discipline, all the trial we were and error. To be quick. Yeah, yep. I, mean, I got sent to behavioral rehab for having a girlfriend. My brother, yeah. his first girlfriend wasn't even a Christian. <gasps> Shoggy, what? <laughs> and they're yeah, like, okay. Obviously, we were we were going to convert her. You know, I mean, that was really just, <laughs> sure. That was just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but yeah. let's forget what we put Davy through. <laughs> yeah. hey, like, he's fine. I'm now. sorry, I had he's a brain good. burp there. Davy, Davy's what? wasted right now. We're good. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but there is something about the tenacity of the firstborns. We're gonna get it. Dog with a bone, man. Yeah, that's absolutely we will catch right. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, um, Lindsay, uh, I, I know you already said it, but can you just uh, tell everyone again your your socials, where to find you, where to write you, how to reach out if they want to? Totes. So you guys can find me on Instagram and TikTok at the Colt Chronicles, and um, you can email me thecultchronicles at gmail.com and if you care about me doing hair and makeup and being awesome and stuff because that's the account that matters for my job you can follow me over at instagram crazy pretty perfect y'all that's Lindsay williams she's incredible <laughs> i follow both of her instagram accounts in case anyone's wondering Thanks. uh yeah i sure do um it thank you so me much get jobs when you follow me on my work page <laughs> well especially someone as influential yeah. and you know popular as me yeah exactly you know? <laughs> yeah, I need I was, the big guys. I, I literally need the big comedians, man. I I really thought you the, were going to attack me. The there. second I, I do something. grooming on you, I mean, <laughs> sky's the fucking limit, man. Hey, listen, this hair is getting a little Show out of control. Up. I know. I, I want to give you a haircut. I want to like. I, I want to like shape it. It's finally it ponytail length. I know. I just look like a lady cop right now. But yeah, um, I don't like how. Sh- yeah, don't pony it yet. <laughs> well, I did, and uh, one of my friends. Can it man bun yet? Me. Can you man no, bun it? No, because oh, the, the top is so much shorter than the, uh, the bottom. Damn it. I can't wait for weird. the man bun. The top is always shorter than the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, uh, <laughs> one of my friends messaged me when she saw the ponytail and said, you look like a founding father. And I was like, well, can't, can't do <laughs> a ponytail really anymore. It really is that length. It really is that length. Oh my God, I just need so a tri-corner outrageous. hat. You know, I could be little Bear Wheeler. That's the dream for every young homeschool boy. Can you please boy. get some silver spray and just go <laughs> ham? Oh my god, please, please! Fourth of July, just spray the fuck out uh, of it. Oh I'm just gonna god. be George Washington. Oh, it's gonna please. be incredible. 
Give, or Thomas I, Jefferson. Yeah, I need the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, oh, so and I will you have curly cosplaying. hair too. You could like pin the curls on the side. <laughs> oh my God. The fun this, we're going to have when we finally meet each other. Moving in into, a, into an area that. Oh, uh, I can't wait. Yeah. Are you, was that kinky or uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Asking Maybe for a, a little friend. bit of both, just the way I like it. Just the way I like it. <laughs> you know those side pin rolls. They're, they're just, mm. woo. Gets a lady gets going. going. Yeah, gets me going. <laughs> All the um, ladies come to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! My founding father milkshake brings all the girls. To the That's right. <laughs> and then they quickly leave. And then yeah, and and then they when get a look at my ratty ponytail. Pony pony like, <laughs> <laughs> They're like at bouncing. This guy does not understand hair. We thought he did. Nope. We thought he had these long, luscious locks. Turns out he's real weird. He's real yeah, uncomfortable. Real weird rat tail. He seems like the kind of guy that should have a mustache just as like a warning sign to everyone. <laughs> the big old porn stash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, which, which is like a little curl up in the corner just to show that, you know, you're proper. Oh yeah, the the wax it no, I just the tiniest uh, bit on the side. Every time I try to grow a mustache, I end up looking like a crackhead. Tom Selleck? <laughs> Not even remotely. No, I wish I had that kind of luxury. <laughs> I wish I had his luxurious mustache. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Um, uh, because I can't grow a beard. I can't grow a mustache. It just it comes in so patchy and weird. I just I look But you like carry the five o'clock shadow really well though. Thank you. This is actually like a five day shadow. <laughs> well, I mean, you try. <laughs> I do. I really try. I try so hard. I'm <laughs> He's like over there, just like, oh, like hoping Please the play doh will just freeze out of space. <laughs> when I was younger, this is true. This is, and this is so sad. <laughs> but my facial hair, I wanted a goatee more than anything when I was like, of course, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. Um, and the, the my goatee whiskers i guess whatever <laughs> were so thin it grew in so thin that i ended up i'm so ashamed of this i colored it in with eyeliner <laughs> and it looked i so love bad. It. It, oh, looked it was so janky so bad oh it was <laughs> awful it are looked like i this? drew on a goatee with a shark <laughs> oh no there are thank god there oh, are photos. god thank damn that would have been Lord. amazing yeah, uh, yeah, but you don't know how many times incredible. I've actually used mascara to fill a beard in. Really? Yeah, to like, cut, yeah. Oh, there's some. That's what I should have been doing, beards. but no, I was using stupid yeah. eyeliner <laughs> like for my drawn go hairs in. <laughs> like, yeah, look just, at me. <laughs> <laughs> this is no one's gonna notice this. <laughs> <laughs> look, a preschooler drew on my face. <laughs> so manly <laughs> True. listen with that kind of facial hair I'm, I'm not allowed to be around preschoolers you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh so good well, well Lindsay, i don't thank think you mustaches so much. are that hot anyway so you know that's just my personal opinion well i can't tell you how much i appreciate that <laughs> you need uh, to have the full thing like if you're gonna like like how bryce does you know like he's got oh like, the full the beard. beard yeah oh full, I could, you have to have the full thing you can't i just could never stash it's so 80s porno creepy creeper dude. i got i got real thick eyebrows and that's about it there you go for the facial yeah. hair that so was that's the scar from the fight in the hallway at indy no no that was from a separate fight <laughs> oh, that was damn. from a separate fight i uh, was really hoping an, an ATI or kid gave that to you no that was uh, a guy outside of a club whose girlfriend i was about to go home with um well you was, know you probably deserve that scar and i, I look really I cool for absolutely, it absolutely <laughs> thank you so much yeah i was wearing cool aviator scar. sunglasses that got smashed to pieces when he punched me in the face and one of the shards Yikes. cut me on the on the eyebrow yeah everyone thinks i'd everyone thinks that's fake that i i do oh like no it. it's no the way that it the way that it like swerves in anyway i'm yes. gonna make a part of so i know what i'm doing you know what you're talking about yeah those <laughs> I'm aren't like, that's weird, legit like, yeah yeah i know yeah no one purposely goes like like <laughs> <laughs> <all> <laughs> like there's weird. a curve in there y'all that's not that intentional. doesn't work <laughs> uh, that's funny Lindsay. thank you so much i appreciate always the opportunity to talk to you especially when it's reminiscing about our you know shared cult experiences cool but this was a super shit. fun one this was yeah. great i, I mean going me. back to indie was wild and you were the first person i thought of when i got Aww. back i was like i got to talk to somebody about this who's been through this Lindsay? Lindsay has um but yeah i, I love it. that you did all the videos i like i watched your, your i actually watched it twice because one night i was like 
Well, I'm just going to listen, but I I'd had a, um, an adult gummy. <laughs> oh. And I literally was like, I just couldn't even watch the screen anymore. So I just listened to your voice and I was like, wow, he really doesn't know where he is. I had no, <laughs> I, I was thinking so that. I was like, lost. And I would try to like open my eyes and look at him like, yeah, I don't, I don't recognize that. But I'm like, but I know where all of it is. So why can't he know where it is? <laughs> so then I watched it the second time, uh, Suber, and I could not wait to ask you those different questions oh, yeah, you know, was, about the, so the, the gift shops and Bill's office and well, you know, talk about the pool. Oddly enough, I think a lot of <laughs> my lack of memory is due to adult gummies. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you know. yeah, you know, <laughs> we all get well, to have our experiences. I'll, um, I will uh, definitely work on putting together an episode with Joe McLean um, and keep you in the loop on that because I think that would be just such an interesting conversation. But in the meantime, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Go follow Lindsay. You can follow me too at Davey Jacks. You can follow (laughs) the podcast at Friends with Davey. Yes. Uh, But we love you and we will see you very soon. Everyone have a great night. Take care.